Welcome to week four, and in week four we are going to talk about landforms, maps, and mass wasting. In this first video, we are going to discuss uh, landforms really briefly, the whole idea of gradation and uplift, and uh, topographic maps. And then throughout the maps section and the Google Earth section, we'll kind of talk a little bit about how you're going to use those tools to find different features and landforms and identify things. So um, to kind of get started, to review a little bit, uplift and gradation. So the, this is the process by which a lot of these landforms are, are beginning to form. Uplift causes the crust to rise, and this is, is because of tectonic activity. Plates colliding with one another and then forcing parts of the Earth up um, to higher elevations. Gradation is the erosion of those topographic high points. And so here you can see the uplift the rise due to some kind of um, compression or convergent plate boundary. And then we have gradation, erosion of this high point. And what we're going to see in these different landforms is the various ways this erosion happens through glaciers, through mass wasting, through streams, so on and so forth. So to talk a little bit about maps and how we're going to recognize some of these different features, what we're going to talk about um, is what these things are, um, how you locate features on a map using latitude, longitude, some basic information, how do you figure out elevation by using a map, distances, um, and then um, we'll use this, this idea of aerial photographs. That's what we're going to talk about um, in the third video about Google Earth. So something that's going to help you quite a bit is if you uh, look at the USGS uh, map symbols link which you have on the Moodle site and what you, it gives you is a, a brief kind of overview of what one of these maps is and how you read them so make sure you look over that before you come to lab. It gives you a nice overview. And then it lists some of the types of landform symbols that you're going to be looking for and using to help identify what you're viewing. Um, and for example, if I, uh, they're kind of broken out by different categories, such as coastal features, things along the edge of a continent, um, contours here this is a great thing to, to look at first so what is an index contour why would they be dashed um, what, what do depressions look like things like that and then um, data points different various features like airports or reservoirs campgrounds so on and so forth different types of glacier features, what those might be, railroads, land surveys. So these maps contain a lot of information, tons of information. So you can see here different types of water features, lakes, bogs, um, surface features where there's sand, gravel, vegetation type. Um, and there you go. So make sure you peruse that before you come to lab. There's a lot of things to be familiar with. It might help to maybe print this off, bring it to class. That would be a beneficial thing to do. So to return back over here to our slides, so some of the things you're going to see on these maps um, include north arrows. And you're going to notice on that map that you have multiple different types of north three different ones. Uh, the first one here is called true north. So this is towards the Earth's axis of rotation. So the, the center of which we rotate around. We also, and that, then that true north doesn't really change all that much in human lifetime, maybe in the thousands of years time scale, but not in um, our lifetime. Whereas magnetic north does change. And this changes on a daily or yearly basis. Um, so this is the, the direction in which a compass will point. Uh, this can be confusing because if you're out uh, maybe using a really old map from 1980 and you're trying to find your way from one place to another and you're using a compass, if you don't account for this difference, 
what's called declination, the difference between magnetic north and true north, or grid north, which tends to be very similar, um, you end up lost. Because as you can see here, um, sometimes you've got your, your difference between magnetic north and true north or grid north might only be a degree or two, so you might be able to, to find your way, but sometimes it can be as much as 15 degrees. So if you're using a, a compass, you're going to get lost. So definitely make sure you take that into account. And you can Google search declination and it brings you to a website where you can type in your exact location and it will tell you what that declination is currently measured at. And then grid north is what follows the longitude lines on your map, which tends to be the same as true north on a map. So when we look at the um, next video, video two, where we, we're going to do a little tour of a topographic map, we'll look at where this is located on that map. So the other thing that you see on one of your, your maps is what's called a bar scale or a ratio scale and that's located at the very bottom center of the map. Depending on what type of map you have, it's going to be a different scale. Um, so this ratio scale is going to be listed on your map right at the very bottom center. It'll say one colon and then a number. Um, and the basically the larger that number is, the more zoomed out on the Earth's surface you are. So basically if you were imagining that map and you're kind of floating above the Earth's surface, if you have a smaller number, you're really close to the surface. If you have a much larger number, you're really far away from the surface. So the bigger the number is, kind of like the more distance that snapshot view is uh, of your map. Um, so if you can see here, we've got three examples, all of Mount Rainier, same location, but we can see our scale is very different. So this smaller scale, 1 to 24,000, we can see the very top of the mountain peak, but that's pretty much it. All the glaciers that exist there, we go to the 1 to uh, 100,000 scale, and we can see we zoomed out. The, the spot that we would have been able to see in this previous map is kind of right in the very center here. So you can see we've zoomed out quite a bit. And then this other one is a much larger scale. Um, 1 to 250,000, and that one you can see uh, our previous map image would have been about here. So the bigger that number is, the more zoomed out from the surface you are. And basically the, the smaller the scale, the larger features appear. Whereas the bigger the scale, the smaller surface features appear. It's a little confusing sometimes, but just think about the bigger that number is, the more zoomed out, the further away you are from the surface of the Earth looking at the same object. And so this ratio scale that you see um, is kind of like if you were looking in a microscope and you want to say, oh, well, I'm zoomed in this many times on this object. Well, this is telling you how many times you're zoomed out from the Earth's surface. And basically what you can say because this is a ratio scale, you can plug any units into the scale. You can say, okay, one inch on the Earth's surface equals 24,000 inches um, on the Earth's surface. So one inch on the map, you measure the ruler. In that one inch on your map, you're going to have 24,000 inches on the Earth's surface. You can switch it to centimeters. One centimeter measured with a ruler on your map is equal to 24,000 centimeters on the Earth's surface. So basically you can plug any units you want to into that ratio scale. And what we've got here is this is kind of showing you one inch equals 2,000 feet. Uh, basically what they've done is said, okay, one inch would equal 24,000 inches. And then they say, well, how many inches are in a foot? 12, divide 24,000 by 12 and you get 2,000 feet. And then they did the same conversion factor over here only converting into miles. So that's the scale of our map. Latitude and longitude, so your, your Tobo maps show you actually three different coordinate systems printed on the map. We're only going to talk about one, latitude and longitude. And latitude longitude numbers on the map are in a specific font that I'll show you in the next video. Uh, the other uh, the other uh, coordinate systems are township and range, which is all the red stuff that you see on a map. And then 
UTM or Universal Transverse Mercator, which is very similar to what your GPS would use. Um, and this is in meters, and those numbers tend to be in blue, um, usually on your map, um, also in a much different font. And I'll point those out to you on the map. So latitude, longitude, so basically these are measured in degrees, and then each degree is divided into minutes, and then each minute is divided up into seconds. You can also divide it into decimal degrees as well. That's um, an appropriate thing to do as well. So basically in one degree, you have 60 minutes, and in one minute, you have 60 seconds. And that's what you're going to see on the edges of your map. So what is latitude longitude? Well, latitude um, on a map of the globe, and please keep in mind these, this is a um, clip art, so they're not perfect. <laughs> um, latitude is going to be the lines that are running east-west, like the rungs of a ladder. Um, and if you're in the northern hemisphere, you're going to increase in number as you get away from the equator, the equator is going to be zero. In the southern hem hemisphere, same thing, you're going to increase in number as you get further and further away from the equator. Longitude are the ones that run north-south, and these are, are measured east and west of the prime meridian. So we go um, in one direction, 365 degrees, basically, and you can um, say um, or actually it's really 180 degrees, so you go 180 degrees west of the prime meridian and then 180 degrees east of the prime meridian. Um, and so the two common map sizes we see, you're going to see 15 minute and 7 and a half minute. What does that mean? Well basically that is telling you how much latitude and longitude that map covers. So if it's, if it's a 15 minute, it's covering 15 minutes of latitude and 15 minutes of longitude. And this correlates nicely to the type of scale. So usually seven and a half minute quadrangles are going to have a 1 to 24,000 scale. And we're going to use those in class. So here's a, an idea of latitude longitude on your map. This is your topo map. Your latitude lines are like the rungs of a ladder and your numbers are going to be read off on the side of the maps on either side here. Longitude, run north-south, and you're going to read your numbers off on the top and bottom edges of the map. So contour lines, well contour lines are showing you equal elevation areas and they're going to basically wherever that line is, is that exact elevation. Um, and these are going to show you the topography, the shape of physical features. This is what's going to help you determine where is there a river, where is there a ridge line, where is there a depression. So the heavier lines, the darker, heavier lines are index contours. Those are usually labeled. So when you're looking at the map, you see a darker brown line. If you follow it, you should find eventually that it is labeled with an elevation. The ones in the middle, contour lines in the middle, and between those bold ones, um, are not going to be labeled. And so you can either, to figure out, okay, how, how do I know what the interval is of the map, you can either look at the bottom of bottom center of your map by the scale, it'll tell you what the contour interval is, or you can figure it out yourself by looking for two index contours next to each other, and then you can figure out what each of those lines is worth. Um, so usually maps use the smallest interval that will allow um, the readability and detail of the map, so it's not going to be constant throughout all maps. It's going to change. And all of these maps are, are made by using um, what are called stereo pairs, which are um, aerial photographs that kind of overlap each other. And then when you look at them with these fancy glasses, it pops out at you, kind of like the magic eye posters. Um, and then um, the ground truth with GPS um, and altimeters on the surface. So the uh, kind of last thing I want to talk about is the idea of relief and gradient. So you guys are going to be looking at a map and figuring out, okay, what's the relief from this point to another point, and what's the gradient? Well, what the heck are those? Relief is the difference in elevation between two points. So if we look here where these two pink stars are, um, and we've got some index contours here to help us. If you wanted to determine the relief between those two points, we've got 200 feet here, 300 feet here, 
Oh, and I didn't give you the contour interval. Well, let's see. Let's figure it out. So we've got one, two, three, four lines. So if I go 2, 20, 40, 60, 80, so our contour interval is 20 feet. So our relief here would be, let's see, 100 and then 20. So our relief in this area would be 120 feet from one star to the next. So that's from the lowest point to the highest point on your topographic map. What's gradient? Well, gradient is a measure of the steepness of a slope. It's usually reported in feet per mile. And that's because your elevation is always going to be in feet on a topographic map. And then miles are usually what people measure your horizontal distance in. So basically, you're going to figure out what the elevation is, the, what the relief between those two points is. We figure that out. It's 120. And then you're going to measure the horizontal distance. And you can do that using a ruler and then the scale on the bottom of the map, or a piece of paper and the scale on the bottom of the map. Either one works. So here, I'd say we probably have about two miles based on the scale here. And then you're going to divide them. So you're going to divide 120, your relief, divided by your horizontal distance, which is two miles. And so we get 60 feet per mile. You guys are going to do this in lab um, using an actual map. So that's kind of a brief overview of landforms and maps. We'll come back in the next video and I will give you a tour of a topographic map.